this video, I'm going to unbox my new GoPro Hero 12. I'm going to go over how I set up new GoPros for purposes of fishing. I'm going to explain the settings I use and why. And then at the end, we're going to head out to the river and try this thing out. So let's get started. If you're new here, my name is Barry Rigger. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rage Fishing. Just a quick background, about 10 years ago in 2013, I started filming my steelhead fishing trips because I fished solo most of the time. I had no intent on starting a YouTube channel. YouTube was just a means to share these videos with friends and family. However, one thing led to another and here I am with a YouTube fishing channel. So when I decided to start filming my fishing trips, I went to Cabela's and bought the state-of-the-art GoPro Hero 2. It was $3.99 if I remember correctly in the kit that it came with. This thing only recorded in 1080. I only had the one battery for it, so I was pretty limited in what I could do. However, the newest GoPros film in up to 5.3K, even though I don't necessarily film in that high of resolution. I do sometimes, but most of the time I record in 4K, but we'll go over that in a little bit. But as you can see, as time went by, I started upgrading my cameras every single year. And I would like to thank my subscribers real quick for all the views because I use my advertising money to reinvest in the channel so I just buy new cameras SD cards and batteries with that money but you can see here I've got hero 8 I've got a 9 this is my hero 10 in this media mod here that if you hear any of the videos like when I'm talking in my truck or if it's mounted to my dashboard this is the camera that I'm using because it has this external microphone and it just picks up just a little bit better. This last year I was using my Hero 11 as my primary camera, but what I'm probably gonna be doing is the Hero 12 is going to be my primary camera for steelhead fishing purposes will be mounted to my body. And then I'm gonna be lending probably my Hero 11 to my friends. And then I'll have the Hero 9 and 10 for stationary cameras, either on a tripod or attached to my boat in some manner. So let's go ahead and unbox the camera. So I should say I bought this directly from GoPro. They had a deal for subscribers for $2.99 and that's a heck of a deal. But that's just for the camera and a battery. Well, let's see if I can figure out the puzzle how this thing comes undone. Oh, here we go. Cord, battery. What's crazy is they sent me a second battery. I don't know if they were supposed to, but that's okay with me. Maybe I misunderstood and they sent me two. But they, I bought it for $2.99 and it included two batteries, I guess. So it comes with mounting hardware, which I don't really like this really short one. Thank goodness I have some of these taller ones like you can see on my other GoPros because I mount them to my chest pack and that way it's completely flat. If you try to, what I've noticed is these really short ones, if you try to mount the camera flat, it doesn't really work. It kind of has to be at a little bit of an angle. Get this out of the box. Now what I did with my Hero 11, I'm gonna do the same thing with this is I'm just gonna flip this thing over that way that I can put the screen protector on the back because I highly advise putting one on the back just so your camera uh, doesn't get scratched up. So I ordered a kit and before I even take this protective coating off, I'm just gonna get this opened up here. So this one's called the Fit Still. Fit Still Screen Protector. I'll put the links for these down in the description field, but I wanna say this was only about six or seven dollars for this kit and it comes with several different screen protectors. The kit also comes with lens covers and those come in really handy, especially because I often lose these on the side of the river. Oh, look at that, suction cup for installation. That's kind of cool. I've never seen that on any of my kits before. I don't put an actual lens protector on the lens. Now the reason for that is because these lenses, the cover is completely replaceable and I have a spare one with me at all times. That way if I fall down or if I lean against a rock, I've done that before, scratching up the lens, I can just pop that whole lens off and just replace it. My thought on it is anytime that you put any kind of a cover over that lens, even if it's a very clear piece of glass, I think it's going to affect the image quality. And since that's replaceable, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I haven't had a real big problem. I think my Hero 9, I had to replace one of the lenses because I fell down. But I would recommend 
using the screen protector for this viewfinder and for the rear viewfinder. So this is the one for the front viewfinder. So I'm gonna set that aside and one for the rear viewfinder. So again, what I did last year is I just left it in this little container. That way it kind of holds it still for me. I'm gonna stage this piece. So this is the rear screen protector. It's basically got a layer of protection on the very back portion here. So right when I'm ready, I'm going to peel that off and stick it down on the camera. But you can see these, they're guide stickers. I'm gonna take one of those, put those in a couple different positions on those screen protectors. That way I can kind of line it up. Here we go. Let's hope this works first time. Got a little bit of a bubble there. Oh, I got it out. Nice, I actually did it first time. It's a miracle. No dust particles got in there because I waited till the last second to use that. Oh, that's kind of weird. The camera, I was like, what is all over my camera? It looked like it had a bunch of dust on it, but it's kind of speckled with blue, kind of the GoPro blue color. I don't know if that will come up in the camera. It's kind of interesting. At least at a glance, I'll know which one is my 12 and which one's my 11 and nine. So let's go ahead and stage the front screen protector. All right, again, it's got just like a protection layer on there. So my plan, peel that off and stick this on there so dust doesn't even have a chance to form on there. Here we go. Man, it's really stuck on there. Oh great, I pulled the little tab off. There we go. Well, that's gonna complicate things just a little bit. All right, that could have gone smoother, but it looks like it went on okay. <laughs> it actually worked. Not very impressive, Barry. All right, so we got our screen protectors. I'm gonna take a second and get all of this stuff cleaned up. I forgot to use this suction cup. All right, continuing on. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure your GoPro batteries are completely charged before you even try to set this thing up. And the reason being is because the camera might need an update and you don't wanna have a battery that's only partially charged while it's running the update. And I'm gonna charge both of these. I have probably 15 of these batteries and I'm just gonna grab one of the ones that's already charged. All right, let's charge these up. Okay, so I have one of my fully charged batteries. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And then I'm gonna put my SD card in. I highly recommend using SanDisk Extremes. They're the gold and red micro SD cards. I use 256 gigabyte cards. They're anywhere from 20 to 27 bucks depending on the day but I've had no problems with the SanDisk Extremes. If you want to bump up, you can get the SanDisk Extreme Pro, which is black and red. Those work really good too. I have a bunch of those in 128 gigabytes. So that's in there. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. So let's see what happens here. So it's on. So what it's gonna end up doing is it's gonna want me to hook up to the Quick App, which is GoPro's app that they use for like updating cameras. So let's go ahead and just go through this. So English, yes, I agree, legal stuff. Voice control, I turn that off because who knows what I say while I'm fishing. I don't want it affecting my GoPro. So it says, install the GoPro Quick App on your phone to finish setup. Leave your camera on and follow the app instructions. So let me get on there. Quick app. All right. So leave your camera on and follow the app instructions. So I'm gonna hit GoPro. I'm gonna put like up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a camera with a plus. I'm gonna hit that. We found your GoPro. So I'm gonna hit connect camera, Bluetooth pairing request, pair. So now it's pairing, camera paired. Name your GoPro. All right, what should we name it? I'm just gonna name it Rage Fishing Hero 12. 
there is an update, so we're gonna go ahead and upload that. So it's doing it for me. And that's the nice thing about turning this thing on and using the Quick App. When I got my Hero 10, it had an update that I didn't know about, and I hit the river and I had all kinds of problems. And I have been using that GoPro Hero 10 for years, a couple years now, and it's been flawless after I got the updates. So make sure to check for updates. Almost done, don't go anywhere installing the update. Be sure to leave your camera on and don't leave the app. Your GoPro will power off and on a few times. So while it's doing that, I'm going to explain a couple of mounting options for you real quick. My favorite mount that I have found for steelhead fishing, and this probably would go for like fly fishing for trout as well, is to use a chest pack. These Umqua Overlook and the Rock Creek chest packs. I'll show you this one here. They have these leader holders on the front and you can put these backpack GoPro mounts on that strap. And it works out just great. So this piece right here is only about $13. It's called the Telesyn backpack mount. I'll put the links in the description field below, but that has been the best mounting system for GoPros as far as I'm concerned. You can either mount the GoPro, and I'll kind of demonstrate real quick with one of my other GoPros. Like here, I'll grab my 11. You can either mount it, to where it's low like this. Or what you can do is you can turn it upside down so it gives you a little bit more height, like this, basically. Now obviously you'd have to turn your camera around, but that way you could elevate the camera a few inches if that helps you with what you're looking at there. But anyway, this has been an awesome mounting system. I'll put the link for this, the Umqua pack in the description field as well, if you wanna check those out. The Overlook system is about 150, 160 bucks, and the Rock Creek is about 80 bucks if you just want a simple chest pack. While this is updating, I'm gonna go ahead and mount it to this. I'm trying not to hit any buttons so I don't mess anything up. So GoPro kinda of has a universal mounting system. You can see it's kinda of got these two I don't know what you call them, tabs that go inside this portion here. Let's go, oh, there we go. Okay, it's, it says update complete. So here we go. So you can do one of two things, it looks like. You can actually set the camera up using the app, but I don't like to do that because I generally don't have my phone out while I'm fishing. One of which is I lost an iPhone, as in it got fried last year, because it got wet. All right, so here we go. So down here at the bottom, there's a little uh, kind of oval button there. Touch that. It says video mode, standard quality. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one thing I wanna do, so there's kind of like a, so if you swipe down and you go to the right, let's see, preferences. Oh, controls, easy. And you're gonna wanna put it in pro mode, that's right. My Hero 11 had this as well. The pro mode just allows you to make a little bit more adjustments. It's, I mean, you can use it in the easy mode, just pay attention to what the settings are, but I like it in the pro mode. So back out of there. So now it actually is giving me like what the resolution is, the frame rate, and what camera angle I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna hit that. So video, 4K, 30, now I like to use 60, so I'm gonna hit that. Oh, I see. So you have to roll up, and so I'm gonna hit 60 frames per second. And then it's gonna give you, this is a little different, so I'm learning as I go here. So as I'm kind of rolling the screen up, it's giving me like a bunch of different lens options. Now I like linear with horizontal lock, which on here it shows as an L and a plus. Now what that does is if you're moving around like you're fighting a fish and you're kind of turning or rotating the top of your body side to side, your camera will rotate with that. But when it's in linear plus horizontal lock, it'll keep everything uh, perfectly level. And I use that, if you watch my steelhead fishing videos, that is the, what I'm filming in. And you can see how everything stays really level. In the old days, you could really see when you're fighting a fish and you're kind of moving around like this, that the whole frame completely rotates. Let's see, hyper smooth, which is the image stabilization. I'm just gonna leave that on. There's an auto boost. I'm gonna leave that off. I think that's it. 4K 60 linear plus. You're gonna wanna film in 16.9 as far as the aspect ratio. You're gonna wanna record in 4K for purposes of YouTube. If you record in 4K or 1080, at least 60 frames per second, they'll give you a higher compression rate on your videos, and so they'll be clearer. 
but I just like to be able to watch my videos in 4K. I run 60 frames per second, that way if I want to slow down like steelhead jumps, it gives you more frame rate so it looks more natural. So we are all set up and ready to go. So on this, filming in 4K 60 linear plus, it's telling me with a, with a fresh SD card, 256 gigabytes, that I can get seven hours and seven minutes. One other thing I would recommend is swipe down, go to preferences, and then here you can see you can kind of scroll down. You can see at the bottom it says reset. And on the reset menu, you, once you hit that, it says format SD card. You want to format the SD card so it completely cleans the SD card. Even if it's a new SD card, that formats the SD card for the, your camera. You just don't want to hit any hiccups if you go out to the river and get some good footage and then find out that you have some sort of SD card error. So it's formatting now. So let's go back and see. I don't know if I had any footage on that SD. So now it's saying that I can record for nine hours and 13 minutes. I very rarely am actually running video, even though sometimes I'm fishing for 10 hours, I very rarely am running the camera for 10 hours. I should mention that I have a saying that if I'm fishing, I'm filming. So I just film all the time. I don't use the hindsight, which hindsight, basically the camera's on, but it's not recording until you hit the button. It either captures 30 to 60 seconds before you hit the button. For for me, it's like, I'm just gonna record all the time. I never know what I'm gonna capture uh, as far as like B-roll. So I just leave it rolling while I'm fishing. So that's it. Let me go ahead and turn that off. You just turn that off by holding down the side button. So it's all set up and ready to go. So now let's go out to the river and try this thing out. So I just got to the river to do a little winter steelhead fishing. So I'm gonna be trying out the new Hero 12. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the different camera angles. So I'm gonna start with linear horizontal lock. I'm gonna show you what narrow looks like, which is a little bit smaller field of view. And then I'm gonna go to wide and super view throughout the day, just to kind of show you what the different camera angles look like. So let's get going. First cast of 2024 right here. Let's make it a good one. As I expected, the footage is incredibly clear. Always make sure your lens is free of fingerprints, debris, and water drops. One benefit of recording in 4K or higher resolution is to be able to zoom in and still be in high definition. The image stabilization is incredible on the new GoPros. Here's a quick reminder of what footage looked like before this feature was perfected. Okay, first cast out of the way, nothing. Okay, this is linear horizontal leveling. So while I'm fishing the spinner, I'm gonna be twisting my body a little bit to kind of show you I'm going to about a 45 degree angle. As you can see, if just little movements, it doesn't do hardly anything. But let's let's just see what the camera angle looks like. So you can see I'm trying to purposely show my rod in the view here. That way if I get a strike, you can actually see it on the rod tip. Now I'm going to change it to linear. Okay, this is just linear. You can see I can turn almost completely sideways. Look at that. I'll take one cast just to kind of see what that looks like. and I'm filming in 4K 60 frames per second. Aspect ratio 16 to nine. Okay, now we're on wide angle. This is probably a good overall camera angle. 
I like linear because it has the horizontal lock. I kind of wish that the wide had horizontal lock as well, but it doesn't look like it does. All right, now let's go to Super View. Okay, now we're in Super View. You can see it's more of that fisheye look. We actually use this when we're surf perch fishing because when, when our rods are up in the air just a little bit more, we like to be able to see the rod tip when we get a bite. The problem with this, especially for float fishing, for steelhead, let's say, is it's going to make the bobber look really small. In fact, you might not even be able to see a bobber. Bald eagle. Come on, let me have a bobber down right now. Nothing would be more America than that, huh? So I'm gonna call it a day. The fishing was horrible, but I got a opportunity to test out this camera. And so far so good. I obviously haven't seen the footage yet, but what I can tell you is that the batteries do seem to last a little bit longer. If I remember correctly, I've only changed the battery twice today and I've fished for about five hours. So they claim that this gets up to one and a half times the battery life out of the previous models like the 11 and the 10. So I'm gonna be running the Hero 12 for the rest of the 2024 winter steelhead season. So I'll let you know what I think as we go along. If you want more information on how to make your own fishing videos, last year I did a three-part series titled Filming Fishing. In part one, I go over all the GoPros that I use. Obviously the Hero 12 won't be in it, but I talk a little bit more in depth about settings, lighting, audio quality, like using external microphones. I talk about SD cards and batteries. Plus I talk about the camera that I'm using to film this with, which is a Canon M50. In part two, I go over all the mounting systems I use for GoPros, the body worn mounting systems and mounting systems like that you can mount on your boat and or a tripod. In part three, I talk about strategy. So whether or not you wanna start a YouTube channel on how to make money, or maybe you just want to edit some videos and share them with friends and family through links on Facebook. Anyway, I cover all of that in part three. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment filled below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out on YouTube. If I earned it, give me a thumbs up, but thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.